uh, there's a lot of talk about you know the fact that how we as Asians represent uh, you know for example Bollywood celebrities endorsing skin lightening creams um, even within our communities um, for example when babies are born uh, we discuss the color of their skin uh, and if they're they're gora then obviously they're lovely and cute um, so tell me I mean, anybody can start the conversation what are your thoughts on this I guess, again, growing up where I grew up in, and I keep going back to that in a sense, is I grew up a, um, a lot around black people. And, and I guess, again, it's a bit of a historical thing. Back in the 70s, black people and Asian people, um, we worked together on a lot of things. And I think a lot of it at that time, I think culturally we were very different. So we didn't seem in my small world, and it's probably not very representative in some way, just in my opinion, uh, we got on quite well. Um, and this is prior, because I think, I think there's so many things have happened about that whole debate and stuff. I and mean, this is sort of going into different territory in a sense, in that, in that we collectively sort of, because I guess in those days, the challenge was more about racism I think, as opposed to sort of post 9-11 and post 7-7, where we've got other issues coming into the fore because of global events. Prior to that, we had, we had, we, we sort of worked collectively. And as, as a part of that, black people were pretty much part of, part of our community, you know, in the Hare Hills in Leeds, where, where I live, Chapel Town was down the road in Leeds. So we sort of got together. My brother pretty much sort of grew up all around. He had more black friends than he had Asian friends. So, you know, he was very active in the, in the carnival and stuff like that so he still is um and so you know so there's that sort of interrelationship going on so we were very much you know part of working together and part of sort of uh, acting as friends and collaborators almost if you want to put it that way but maybe that's just a you know it's just a personal opinion um i mean there was there was that sort of antagonism sometimes from uh, bless him you know people of my, my, my late dad's generation who had some sort of, you know, maybe prejudices against people like that, uh, or sorry, people from the African Caribbean community. Um, but that's, that's pretty much, you know, that's pretty much how it was. Um, but, you know, nothing more than that I can think of, you know, sort of in that sense. Our generation's a bit different, well, my generation's a bit different in terms of like where I grew up, but I, I definitely know that, you know, my parents from their generation, there was a sort of a prejudice in a sense and I grew up in East London so obviously it's a, it's a completely multicultural community you know everyone you know our next door neighbours were um were African sort of we all had that sort of uh, community but there's a sort of prejudice in terms of you know like they can't marry your daughter they can't sort of you know become one of the family you you can get along but there there are those kind of those hurdles and there's a huge problem with sort of colorism and sort of skin color. Like I'm the darkest in my family and like, obviously my family loved me, but like growing up, I, w I was called like, you know, the dark one always. Um, whereas my sister is very, very fair. And sort of there's always those sort of comparisons and now only growing up where we've had to confront these sort of conversations that actually like now that, you know, my siblings are having kids, we, you know, we can talk about it and actually we shouldn't really be saying these things. And it's not, it, it's really not right to say, but, it, it's one of those things that's filtered down and as my parents have gotten well now as my mum's sort of gotten older and you know she's worked here she worked in, in a school for like 20 years so only now she's sort of opening her eyes a little bit more um, just I've always been very uncomfortable with this deep insecurity that we all have around this it's so deeply entrenched historically yeah. and, I, and I personally think it goes back to the colonial hangover really I think there is that sense of the gory mem get memsa type uh, mentality yeah. isn't it I think it's something that we can't, it's so deeply entrenched in our consciousness, I don't think we can get away from it overnight. I think there's some intersectionality here as well, though, because I was thinking about all the songs that are from Bollywood just earlier, <laughs> just, um, just having a think, um, brainstorm, really. Um, oh, and Gauri Kalaya and Julia, and all that stuff. And if you think of Gauri Khan, the wife of Shah Rukh Khan, you know, the most famous Indian yes. on the planet, yes. you know, that's her name. She's defined yes. by a, you know, and so I found that really weird. And they are obsessed. But there is a weird kind of um, sexism here as well, because yeah. a Bollywood hero, for example, can be dark and be successful. Yeah. But how many Bollywood heroines do you, do you know who are who are dusky? And dusky is the thing that they use, don't they? When they yes, use, you yes. know, um, or they will always they will always soft filter them so much and put much, so, so much makeup on them that actually, yeah. you know, there were some beautiful ladies there who they they don't look like themselves, you know. Yeah. Um, and I find that 
deeply, deeply uncomfortable. Yeah. But I'm coming at it from someone who, um, you know, being fairly light skinned and having family who are different kind of shades, different shades of um, Asianness. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's weird because I've always found that I've passed. It's a really old, horrible term, but it's true that I've forgotten a number of times that people haven't realised that I'm Asian. Yeah. And so it's some of the experience that I've had around that. So it's yeah. it's kind of the flip side of it, really, because yeah. I get asked, "Well, you don't sound like an Asian. You don't look like an Asian," and therefore that in itself has been problematic for me. Wow, interesting. But then again, that speaks to our uh, that speaks to our wider insecurities around this. Yeah. Um, and we're talking about Black Lives Matter. Yeah. For how long? For how long? Or how much do Black Lives actually matter to us as a community? I think there is some serious hypocrisy in our community around this. Yeah. And the one example that in Muslim Muslims we always come out with Hazrat Bilal, uh, Bilal, you know. Yes. Beloved of the Prophet. And yet, how many Black people do you know? And when your daughter wants to marry a Black man, what is your initial gut reaction to this? I okay. think. I think those issues of racism are deeply entrenched and I think there are conversations that we in the Asian community definitely need to have around this. And do you agree Akil, conversations around this subject definitely need to be had? They do. What, what it does though is it brings up a, a, quite a few things. One is that there's no such thing as an Asian community, there are communities. There's no such thing as a Muslim community, there are communities. So there are different people with different socio-economic backgrounds, from where they came from, from here, etc., with different opinions and different and different experiences. So that's one of the things that we mustn't, you know, there are, when we talk, particularly if you're bringing Bollywood and then therefore you're bringing in non, you know, you're bringing in other uh, areas of, of the sub Asian subcontinent of people that are here. So there are all sorts of weird things that, that you know, yeah. we cannot in any way say it's an Asian story because quite frankly, it's a story that goes beyond that. Now, if you go to, I don't know. You got. I mean, if you go to North Africa, there's yeah. a split there. I mean, people that we would class as being brown, right, in Morocco, places like that, they yeah. they, they call themselves white against against darker coloured people from who were in sub in the sub Sahara, mm. you know, sub Saharan Africans who were part of Morocco. I could go on in Libya, China, all these places. So yeah. we have this. Is not this is not necessarily an Asian thing or a Muslim thing. Mm. You can go to virtually every culture. In, mm. in in the world and they all have this issue with this the bigger issue is is what is that what is the world's and i mean that the world's obsession with with paleness with whiteness as it were and that's the story for me and what this black what what black lives matter has shown is is actually it's cast a, it's put the light the spotlight onto a lot of these things which is to say you know i could boy mr moroccan you are black mm. yeah you're not white. Why are you calling those people black? You're not white. And, you know, and, and, and when I was growing up, we were all black, politically black, as it were. And so if you're a child of that particular period, it's very hard to have this kind of racism because it doesn't really sit with the, 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 the you know, my old upbringing, you know. I'm wearing a Fred Perry because I'm an old mod, you know, because of the whole two-tone scar and music. When it was black music, we were listening. I could go on. So it's, it's difficult for me to have that. Now, that doesn't mean that I'm perfect because far from it, but it, what it shows is, is that none of us are perfect and every single one, whether it's an individual, a community, a, cult, a, a country, uh, whatever, all of us have to sit down and think about what is going on. And, and all of this is about, it tells you so many things when you, when you start to put, put that spotlight on it, which is in America, they have got huge issues that they've not dealt with with regards to you know, um, race relations and the whole relationship with people that were brought over as slaves and never been freed etc cetera, etc cetera. they've got huge issues that, whereas we have also got issues relating to colonialism and the fact that we've never really addressed any of it and when we talk about slavery always remember it was only a couple of years ago that the british government finally paid off its debt that it took out to pay the slave owners when they abolished slavery in this country not the slaves but only a couple of years ago, the loan that we took out was paid off for the money that we gave the slave master, not the oh. slave. So we have huge issues in this country. I'm not saying kicking over the statues is necessarily the right thing to do, but you've got to understand that anger because people know that. And that's why I think the BLM thing is not black and, you know, pardon the pun, not black and white in that sense. I think it's a, it's a whole shade of grey 
and it goes across racism all the way to who owns history for all the way to who owns the levers of power. Also our own identity though, isn't it, as well, because were it not for colonialism, we wouldn't be here. You know, that's a fact. That is a fact that if it weren't for colonialism, I would not be in this country. Most yeah. of us, all of us probably wouldn't be in this country. So mm. it plays deeply into our own identity, who we are, where we came from. And it's, I guess ultimately it comes, it's honesty, isn't it? I mean, yeah. yes, some kind of reparation and apology is good. And that's one thing Britain is always demanding apologies of other people who've done atrocities. I think an apology for colonialism rather than the, just the, you know, just, the nonsense that Boris has been spouting, you know. I'm less bored about an apology and more about a, a history that understands all of this. Yeah, honesty, honesty. Because, Apolo you know, apologies have a place, but because if you don't understand, history. yeah, if you don't understand history, you, you keep on making the same mistake, and you don't, and you don't. I, I remember when, when the whole Bosnian War was going on, mm. Serbian people telling me, you know, the, you know the, the the Serbian commanders, they were talking about. They were talking about battles that happened hundreds of years ago with the Ottoman Empire. And then it's only when I'm, I made a series on the I'm obsession with the Ottomans and made a series on the Ottomans. And, and you look at what they did. It wasn't all great. It was pretty horrible, brutal mm. stuff that went on in terms of the stealing of firstborn men. The harem was made up in you know, all this rubbish that you see on these Turk Ottoman dramas. Now, the reality is very pretty young girls were just kidnapped from Romania and Serbia and all those kind of places for the harem. All of that went on. Now, yeah, and every, every we celebrate there. the Ottoman Empire, right? Yeah. But it was like all empires. The fact of the matter is, I don't think you can have an empire and actually come out of it unscathed. And that's it's that level of honesty. If we have that level of honesty, then I'm not saying it will all be okay, but it will make the conversations less kind of polarized because there is zero honesty around the whole world in terms of how people have behaved and how people in the past and how people behave now and where some of those ideas might come from. I guess education has to play a big part, doesn't it? In, 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 in you know, honest, honesty and education. Now, Boris has been talking yesterday about we can't rewrite and Photoshop our history, but that's what we've been doing. That's what all empires do. It's in their very nature to do it because you want to do, you know, it's, it is about vested interest for your country. And, you know, like it or not, we're part of all of those stories and all of those narratives. So. I think, I think it's highlighting I think it's highlighting some of those stories isn't it as well because the more you highlight the stories that way you know we are part of the history whether you know um I I know this when we were doing our cricket project a few years ago we came across uh, you know you talk about all the modern day cricketers and what have you it's a passion of mine but we came across some paperwork and a team uh, relating um, some paperwork to, to a team which went back to 1961. So there was a set of Muslims who played cricket in the Dewsbury League, um, intelligent, articulate, came over, uh, first sort of Gujarati Muslims came over, formed their own team, they were well established. But it's those nuances of history, those little stories that, that where people have been active in the community and the more stories that emerge of that, sort of, you know, it's a bit like, you know, the, the many stories that we get about the war, you know, and the, the part played by various sort of Asian communities in the war. I think they all sort of relate to a sense that, you know, we are part of all of this. And the more that that information comes about, about those groups and the part that they played, it makes people realize that, you know, we're not some sort of side entity, that we are part of this society too. Mm -hmm.